my project is character recognition using template matching. So here is a demo of the code recognizing digits. The project is based on template matching and the benefit of template matching is the ability to reject invalid input. The training data so far contains only digits 0 through 9, so an X will not be recognized. So an X is uh, recognized as an unknown because it's not in the training data. A recognizer is something that can reject invalid input. In contrast, a classifier will accept almost all input. So here's an example of a classifier. So as you can see, almost every input is being accepted. And for example, the X is recognized as a 4 and with 100% confidence. The confidence number is usually very high because of the softmax probability function is an exponential function. To add more data, go to the Add Data page. The project will use image processing to reduce the number of templates necessary. This way, you do not need to have thousands of examples. A small x like this will actually match a large number of real-world x values. So click Save to add it. So say Image Uploaded. But just to showcase the image processing, I will add different variations of the x. So add another one at a different location. It's actually the same thing. And then I'll add like a big X. And then I'll add like a really thick X. So one thing you do need to do with templates is to add different variations. So a tall X is actually different from like a standard X. So this is like a tall X and like a fat X. So these are real differences. So that's all the X I need for now. The view data page shows all of the images added so far. The page shows the original data alongside the standardized data. In the case of the X, the original data is black and white, 16 pixels by 16 pixels. The standardized data is 8 pixels by 8 pixels. So as shown by the small x, the image is being upscaled and then centered. So the position of the x doesn't really matter. They all result in the same standardized data. For the fake x, if you look at the corners, you can see that some of the pixels have been removed in the thinning process. The project also contains data from the MNIST dataset. So for this dataset, the original data is in grayscale and their standardized data is black and white, 8 pixels by 8 pixels. 
so if you compare some of the images like if you compare number two and number three you can see that originally number two is much thinner than number three but due to the image thinning algorithm uh, both number two and number three have been reduced to one pixel wide during the standardization process The ML page is where the X can be added to the recognition model. When an image is added, it becomes part of the test data. So this is running the current model on the existing data. So for now, the X images are test data. They are not used for training that's why the x images that were just added the seven images are labeled as unknown <clears throat> so while i'm on this page i would like to say that the performance of the recognizer is not good as you can see here for example I have some ideas for improving this and I'll come back to this issue at the end of the video. But for now, I'll add X to the model. So the misclassified images for X, which, which is all seven images, are classified as unknown. I'll just add one image. And then I click the retrain button to retrain the model. So no new data added for zero. Uh, new data added for X, one image for training. So for now, the model contains a total of 296 templates. I'll redo the test. So I added that one template, it fit the, the small X. So there's still four more. I'll just add, I'll just add them all. I'll retrain. So now X has four templates. And I actually have five images for X because I had one the first time I just added four more for a total of five images and four templates because some of those images are redundant. So the software does check for redundant images. I'll go to the demo page and it should be able to do the X now. See, X and uh, here's another one. Here's a small X to that should also work. Now I will return to the ML page and talk about the performance problems. So click on the test button to show the test results. And then click on retrain to show the number of templates uh, behind each digit. So this project is using non-exact template matching. It's allowing a small number of templates to match a large number of images. So the easier the digit, the fewer template, the fewer templates are needed. So one is like really easy, only three templates and so one is really easy, only three templates and I'm able to get like seven over 7,000 correct results. Seven is also relatively easy, 5,000 correct results. Uh, 23 templates. So two is relatively hard, uh, 3,000 correct, 300 incorrect, 
with 51 templates so a lot more than one and more than seven so one way to view this is just some characters are harder and they need more templates to debug the problem in greater detail use the console program so this project has a console program this is console program and number six test model can be used to debug the incorrectly identified images so if you look at the results a lot of nines are incorrectly identified so choose six I'll, I'll look at the nine I'll start image zero and I'll go up to image number 200 So I, I enter 200 and goes up to 222. It does that because each file contains 32 images. So the file that contains image number 200 actually contain a few more images beyond 200. So for the image, uh, the star represents the foreground pixel and the underscore is the background. So this is a nine. And for the template, the star is again the foreground, which is part of the template. And the uh, underscore is again the background. Uh, what's new in the template is that there's a some pixels are labeled one. That means these pixels are pixels that are adjacent to the template pixel. So star is a template, one is adjacent to it. To interpret this data, you have to understand the template matching and training process. And this is described in the documentation under the under the section templates. So I have looked at some of this data and I have some ideas for improving the project. So my first project improvement idea is to uh, do not downsample. So in this project, I have downsampled images to eight by eight pixels. And here's an example of what went wrong. At higher resolution, the image features will be more distinct. So there's this image of nine and there's like a small hole in the middle but when i downsample it the hole in the middle is gone and the nine looks like a one so as a result if i don't downsample if i work at a higher resolution i need more templates but the accuracy will be better the second idea is to fully enable k3 and finning the finning algorithm used for this project is called the K3M. So this K3M. This algorithm has a final stage that I left unimplemented. So this final stage is called the one pixel with skeleton stage. And my implementation of the stage has some bug. So I did not have the time to debug and I disable this final stage. Getting this algorithm to fully work perfectly will improve the results. My third idea is loop detection and this kind of depends on the second idea of the K3M finning. So one advantage of having the one pixel wide skeleton stage is loop detection. A lot of the errors in this project are due to the templates not understanding the loops. So here I looked at the problems for number nine. And I see that on the left hand side, there's number nine with a loop here. But on the right hand side, this is actually a four and there's, there's no loop here. So this one's the same thing, right? Number uh, image number 218. The nine here has a loop, but 
the template here is a three. There, there's no vertical bar here, so there's no loop here actually. For a digit like the number nine, the loops are a vital image feature. So if an image has a loop, you can only match that image to a template that also contain a loop. And so if I can detect loops, I won't be even attempting to match this image with this template because this template has no loop and the image has a loop. So if the K3M thinning algorithm is completely fixed, then I'll get a one pixel skeleton, then I can create a graph and then the loops can be detected. So loop detection depends on the K3M thinning getting fixed. And my final idea is to improve the UI to prioritize incorrect matches. So right now the UI kind of lumps everything together. So the misclassified images of number and line are just lumped all together. So some of these mismatches are incorrect, meaning a nine is being recognized as something else. Like, like over here, a nine is being recognized as a four. And the other incorrect results are the other misclassified images are actually unknown, meaning a nine is recognized uh, is being labeled as unknown because it's not in the template. It does not match any existing template. So my current thinking is that having unknown output is actually kind of okay. Just have a human look at it. If the recognizer says it's unknown, just pass it to a human. And if I can cut down the work by even half, that's actually a huge improvement in a lot of real life scenarios. So the higher priority is to fix the, the incorrect column such that the autonomous portion of the project can work correctly and reliably.